Okay, so we're going to be looking at section 8.1. Uh, we were looking at 8.1 earlier. We talked about oblique triangles that are triangles, that is triangles that are not right triangles. And we use the law of sines to solve some of those. Uh, there's another law that we're going to learn today, which is the law of cosines. Uh, so the law of cosines has its own formula, has its own type of relationships, and its own types of applications. So that's where we're going to begin. Okay, so for the law of cosines, we're going to begin with the same sort of picture as before. That is, we're going to have some oblique triangle. And we're going to label the sides. Remember that the sides and the angles, the sides... Um, are labeled with ABC and the corresponding angles alpha, beta, and gamma. But this time we're going to set ourselves up differently. We need to introduce um, another triangle just as we did before, but we're going to treat it differently. So we're going to look at this triangle where we've broken this up. Now instead of having this whole side be length B, we're going to break it up like this. This side is going to have length X and this side is going to have length B minus X. So the whole length is still B, but we've now broken, up, broken it up into these two pieces. So the question is, well, what can we do with this? Well, this right triangle here on the left-hand side tells us that cosine of alpha is equal to X over C, right? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the first thing. The next thing, oh, before I go on, so that tells us that X is equal to C times cosine alpha. The second thing we need to look at is we're actually going to set up the uh, Pythagorean theorem for these two triangles. So we'll label this side H. The triangle on the left tells us that x squared plus h squared is equal to c squared. The triangle on the right tells us that b minus x squared plus h squared is equal to <coughs> excuse me, is equal to a squared. And so from these two equations, we could actually solve for the h squared. h squared is c squared minus x squared. And h squared is a squared minus b minus x squared. Now, both of these two things are equal to h squared, so they must be equal to each other. c squared minus x squared is equal to a squared minus b minus x squared. Now from here, there's just some algebra that we're going to have to do. First, we're going to expand things out. c squared minus x squared is equal to a squared minus b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. Distribute the negative sign. c squared minus x squared is equal to a squared minus b squared plus 2bx minus x squared. And this is nice because the minus x squared here and the minus x squared there, we can add x squared to both sides to cancel those out. C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared plus 2BX. All right, so what are we going to do with this? Well, this X value can be replaced by C cosine alpha. So C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared plus 2BC cosine alpha. And lastly, we're just going to rearrange this so that we have, uh, we're going to move the, uh, add b squared and subtract 2bc from both sides. I'm actually going to switch the sides of the equation as well. So, uh, is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine alpha. So here again, I added b squared, I subtracted 2bx, and then I just swapped which side of the equation we were looking at. So make the a squared on the left-hand side. This is the more conventional way of writing it. So this is one of the three forms of the uh, law of cosines. Uh, the other two forms we can get, we don't have to re-derive this calculation. We just need to look at the relationships that we have. So I'm going to draw the same triangle with everything in the same relative locations. Like this. So notice in this arrangement that we have cosine of alpha over here, so there's our alpha, and the a squared's on the opposite side. These other two parts are the sides connected to the uh, alpha angle. And so if we wanted to rethink this over here for the other ones, we would say if we took, let's say we want b squared. b squared is equal to, what are the other two sides? a squared plus c squared minus 2ac, cosine of beta, 
cosine of the angle in between those two sides. In the same way, we can get c squared. So we want c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of the angle in between them, cosine of gamma. <clears throat> now there's an interesting fact about these things. Um, let's say for a moment that the angle alpha is equal to 90 degrees. So if, if alpha is 90 degrees, what happens to this? Let's come down to this equation down here. We have a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of 90 degrees. But cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero, so this is a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Now this may look strange, it looks almost like the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, it is the Pythagorean theorem, it's just that we've labeled the parts differently. And this is one of the big important ideas that you need to understand, is that the actual letters we use here are not the important thing. The important thing is the actual relationship we have. So if this alpha, the way I've drawn it, is a 90 degree angle, A is over here, B is down here, and C is over here, and you see that the length of this leg squared plus the length of this leg squared is equal to the length of the hypotenuse squared. So don't fall into the trap of thinking the Pythagorean theorem is only a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's not the letters, it's the relationship. So before we look at an example, let's look at the cases where the law of cosines would be best applied. There are two specific cases that we really want to think about the side, side, side case, and the side, angle, side case. So why are these the two cases that we want to look at? Well, the versions of the Pythagorean, or excuse me, of the law of cosines that we have look like this. So we, if we have three sides, then the only thing to solve for is an angle, and we could put that angle anywhere. However, we need to be very careful about how we set ourselves up when we have one angle and two sides. So when we have the angle and the two sides around them, we have everything on this side of the equation. So, um, so we have the, so remember alpha and A are opposite of each other. So if we have the two adjacent parts, side and side, that's B and C if that's an alpha. So that works just fine. If not, let's say that we had something that looked like this. Um, side, angle, side, side, like this, right? You might recognize this as uh, the ambiguous case for law of, uh, um, law of sines. But here, if we think about it, let's actually label this. So let's say that this is alpha, and so that's A, and we'll put B here and C here. If you look at our formula, we know A, we know B, we know alpha. So we know A, we know B, we know alpha, we don't know C. And if you look at this, we actually end up with a quadratic equation in the variable C. And so that's gonna mean that we're gonna have to do, um, you know, either the, you know, you probably will never be able to factor this in any practical case. So you're gonna end up having to use the, uh, the quadratic formula to solve for this. And it's just a whole lot of work. And so um, this, this other case, aside from the fact that it's, it's an ambiguous case, um, it's just not one that's easy to work with when it comes down to looking at the algebra. In the next video, we're going to look at an example of this and see some applications.